Dr. Nick Delgado here coming to you live with Kyle Delbridge. We're here to talk to you about your immune system. I think everyone in the world is confused and has no clue how powerful your immune system is. And I'm about to tell you that you have a God-given immune system that's second to none. In fact, I don't know of many animals that have a more powerful immune system because based on the length that humans live compared to other animals, um, even in laboratory animals, you know, they get infected, they die, we compare them. I don't like to say we do animal experiments, but you know what? The world's going through an experiment right now. So let's figure out what's going on in the world, and you're going to find out which test I believe is best that will solve all this and get us back to work. You better stay tuned. This is an important show. Here we go. We're going to cut away to the White House. The virus may not have originated naturally as China has advertised, but rather that it possibly started in a Wuhan lab. Sources say it is one of many origin theories the U.S. is looking into. Chinese officials pushing back against that claim on Thursday. The foreign ministry spokesperson dismissing that the virus started in a lab, instead stressing that, quote, this is a scientific issue that should be studied by scientists and medical experts. Yet, it is the same spokesperson who last month floated a controversial theory, tweeting that it might be the U.S. Army who brought the epidemic to Wuhan. China tried to say at one point, maybe they stuff now, that it was caused by American soldiers. That can't happen. It's not going to happen. Not as long as I'm president. Uh, it comes from China. The latest debate over the virus's actual origin coincides with a damning Associated Press report. It claims China sat on critical information for six full days, from January 14th until January 20th, downplaying the outbreak in public before finally revealing the full scope of the threat. The AP report is based on what they characterize as a memo from a January 14th confidential teleconference involving the head of China's National Health Commission. CNN has combed through the government's public report of that teleconference, which was released more than a month after it took place. It says a, quote, sober understanding of the situation was made known to top Chinese government officials, adding that, quote, clustered cases suggest that human-to-human -human transmission is possible. But that was not the message shared publicly from health officials at the time. In fact, as hundreds of millions traveled leading up to the Lunar New Year holiday, mass gatherings at airports and railway stations, the Wuhan Health Commission maintained that the outbreak was controllable and preventable and that this was not contagious. It was not until January 20th that leading health officials acknowledged publicly cases of human-to-human -human transmission. And they even stated that medical personnel had gotten infected. CNN spoke with one of the doctors who early on tried to sound the alarm and contracted the illness. <laughs> Wuhan ophthalmologist Dr. Li Wenliang was reprimanded in early January by Wuhan police. They accused the 34-year-old of spreading rumors after he had messaged friends, warning them of a SARS-like illness going around. Instead of listening to his warning, police silenced Dr. Li and other whistleblowers. He died of coronavirus in early February. CNN's early reporting also highlighted an underreporting of cases. Wuhan residents telling us that their loved ones were never tested, despite suffering from coronavirus-like symptoms. Instead, their deaths listed as severe pneumonia. Whether it was intentional or due to a lack of testing, for some, China's reported numbers of coronavirus cases and deaths does not add up. The mere fact that we don't know the answers, that China hasn't shared the answers, I think is very, very telling. Guys, um, we, we, we've got a challenge in the world. We've got a lot of uh, misinformation going out. It is the one whether you're safe to leave the house. The antibody test, a finger prick test for people without symptoms to determine if your blood carries the antibodies of COVID-19, meaning you've been exposed to the virus at some point and now potentially immune. How immune? We just don't know. We still have a lot to learn about what having antibodies means. Does it mean that you're immune? Can people be reinfected? How long will immunity last? At least 70 antibody tests have been developed by companies or hospitals taking advantage of relaxed FDA rules during the coronavirus crisis. But without the FDA certifying the tests, there's no way to know which ones work. 
leading to companies to use lists of fine print, including positive results may be due to past or present infection with other viruses. One sign of the confusion, Dr. Allison Fox bought 200 tests for her practice in New Jersey, only to be told by the New Jersey Health Department, do not offer any COVID-19 tests to your patients. It's incredibly frustrating. It, it's, it doesn't make sense to me at all. The FDA is now trying to straighten the mess that has been what one testing official called the wild, wild west of antibody marketed tests. The National Cancer Institute and its serum testing lab has been drafted to determine which tests work, which do not. That is key, says Dr. Anya Weinberg, who heads up the testing program at New York's Mount Sinai Hospital, which was just given emergency use authorization. So it's incredibly important that as we learn more and use these tests to um, develop our plans and policies to reopen society, that we can rely on the results we're being given. The FDA has given emergency use authorization to four antibody tests, but the very first company to get it hasn't been able to get its tests into the United States. Celex telling CNN Chinese export rules have prevented them from shipping their antibody tests to the U.S. so far, but they hope and expect that this issue will be resolved very soon. Why so important to have widespread antibody testing and make sure they work? Two big reasons, says Harvard epidemiologist Caroline Bucky. So the first thing is just to work out how many people have been infected, whether we're close to the epidemic peak or whether we have a long way to go. And the second involves what's known as herd immunity. If having the virus and recovering means we won't get it again, and enough of us have had the coronavirus and now carry that immunity, then a large percentage of us, of the herd, won't be able to spread it. We don't need everybody in the population to be immune to the virus. We just need enough people to be immune that the virus can't start to spread again and take off exponentially. That's why it's so important for this next batch of testing to be widely available, easily reportable, and above all, accurate. Guys, we, we're, we're hearing uh, a lot of information, and uh, from, um, Dr. Oz I, I kind of want to cut away he to was, uh, uh, a few other segments, but I do want to comment, uh, if you're depending on the current COVID-19 test, the PCR test, don't depend on it. It is not accurate at all. The Nobel Prize winner, I think we have the book Inventing the AIDS Virus. If, if you hear what he has to say, uh, I think it's important you hear Kerry Mullis, who wrote the foreword to this book, has gone on record saying that the basic test that we're all being told is being confirmed cases should not be used. It's not accurate for that purpose. So let's, let's cut away to uh, Kerry Mullis here. Like Staff Oya said, I don't like it in particular because it killed a professor friend of mine last year. It doesn't respond to antibiotics, so I don't like it. And I'm making an aptamer that will have this attached to it that will know how to find staph when it's in your body and will alert your immune system to go after it. Here's what happened. See that line on the very top with the little dots? That's a bunch of mice that had been poisoned by our scientist friends down in Texas at Brooks Air Base with anthrax. And they had also been treated with a drug that we made that would attack anthrax in particular and direct your immune system to it. You notice they all live. The ones on the top line, that's 100% survival rate. And they actually lived another 14 days or 28 when we finally killed them. And took them apart and figure out what, what went wrong, why did they not die, and they, they didn't die because they didn't have anthrax anymore. So, they did it, okay? Mission accomplished. So, Kerry Mullis is a very flamboyant, um, incredible scientist, Nobel Prize winner, genius. He passed on just uh, less than a I guess it was a few months ago, maybe it was 2019, mm -hmm. August, though. And uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have access to him. Uh, but there's been people who have interviewed him, and he went on public um, uh, interview in, in terms of his revelation that the test that everyone has been depending on, the PCR test, is not accurate. There's one published study that I just noticed uh, has been seemingly... It's still, you can read it, and I have it in my reference notes, 80% false positive. Uh, 
they revised that and they said, well, wait a minute, we have a case study. And I read the case study. And what it said, it, they took the individual, tested him four times, and he came up negative, not having the coronavirus. It wasn't until the fifth test after close to, I think it was 10 days or so, you can look up the reference there, they finally got a positive. What good is a test that you have to test someone five times and like it's roulette, terrible. hopefully get one positive and say, oh, he has coronavirus? That's for someone that, they, that had all the symptoms, all the signs. That's terrible. Well, yeah, and, and here's the problem with the symptoms and the signs. Uh, here, let, let's, let's jump, jump to that point. <laughs> People don't realize, here, I, I had it up on the screen. Give me a moment. Yeah. The coronavirus is uniquely, here we go. I'll pull it right up now. Here we go. Take a look at the symptoms of the COVID-19 to influenza to allergies. Here, just, just take a look. We don't need to see my talking face with, uh, here, I'll, I'll pull this down here. Guys. <laughs> okay, so Kyle, front line, COVID-19, influenza, fever, fever. Cough, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, head, uh, head and body aches for influenza, symptoms 2 to 14 days after exposure, runny, stuffy nose, fatigue, so slight, slight difference. Look at allergies, sneezing, coughing, runny nose, scratchy throat, itchy red, or watery eyes. Yeah, I've been dealing with the, I deal with the allergies this time of year all the time, so sneezing has been, and runny nose has been annoying lately. I've had to, like, look at people as they look at me, like, look, these are not symptoms. Oh. <laughs> this is not what, what yeah. COVID-19 does. I, I, I walked through an area, and uh, I can't remember, but there was some pollen or dust, and I knew it because, you know, when it gets in your nose, you and you're like, oh, yeah. oh, you know, and I was trying to hold it back because there was a guy, like, must have been 100 feet away. I mean, it was far, but I, I let go, uh, <laughs> ah, and I, I couldn't hold it back. And I mean, looked. it was just, and it was like, I, I, I was like, oh, what did you? Oh, I mean, send a posse out and, and get that That's guy. That's how people look at you. Yeah, they right? look at you right? like, what are you, why yeah. are you doing that yeah, in yeah. your space? But, you know, I, I'm running around with this as much as – I have nothing. I am I mean, look at my immune system. It's crazy strong. This is my white blood cell. We've been trying to keep up with my white blood cells, right, Kyle? And they're just Chasing running all around, over the yeah. screen. You can't even get them to sit still because they're so active. They're so healthy. And, and that's how everyone's immune system should be because I follow 35 steps that I'm going to reveal at the coming uh, webinar, uh, and that's scheduled on Wednesday, April 22nd, 4 p.m. Pacific. And you, you can learn everything about uh, the immune system. Here, here we go. Here's another one. There's another cool white blood cell. Here, if you don't know, these are like little red blood cells, the circles, and they're bumped up a few little objects. But this white blood cell, that, that one... That lone maverick, it's going to go through and just tear through and look for bacteria, viruses, uh, foreign proteins, anything that should not be in your body. Folks, that's your immune system. That's what it looks like that I've been looking at for 43 years. And what did Kerry Mullis say about the PCR test and the fact that it's not a legitimate way to detect a virus? And he even went further to say that the same test that they were using for HIV is not accurate for this current COVID-19. So I started searching for antibody tests. I said, wait a minute. And you just saw what the media is saying. The antibody tests are, how shall we say, maybe less than, than, than accurate. So uh, here, let's, let's, let's go to this here. I'll, I'll pull this one up. Uh, don't forget, B cells produce one type of antibody for one foreign molecule. Now, B cells are under the microscope. We can find them, locate them. You have a billion different types of B cells to handle a variety of potential pathogens. In fact, all pathogens and toxins on the planet. When you're attacked by a virus, for example, within minutes, the B cells divide into swarms of clones to produce millions of antibodies to defend against the toxic virus. You look at Wuhan, a person wearing a mask, looking at some chickens. There's some debate about, how shall I say, that the, the body is um, uh, at risk only because of the cross-contamination, if you will. Uh, let, let's just go back to this screen. The cross-contamination. So now that we've kind of dealt with this issue that the immune system 
is really something that is amazing, guess what? The symptoms for COVID-19 we just identified, and they're outlined uh, below, uh, but here's the thing that, that it must be emphasized. When you reach 27 degrees Celsius, your, your body is 98.6. So all you have to do is heat external surfaces to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 80. So you know, that's outdoor, my quest, nice, sunny day. My question was, I mean, if this is a lung virus, what, what, would, in, what would sitting in a sauna and inhaling hot air do for it? I mean, right? Tremendous. Look, look, look at my line here. Far infrared spa, relaxed sauna that I use most every morning, heats your core temperature and wipes out any bad vi- uh, virus or bacteria. I mean, it just knocks it out. Yeah. You know, so you sit in that, in that hot space and inhale that hot air. I mean, you're, you know, you're basically wiping your, your insides with the, a temperature that virus can't compete in, right? It can't live in. Yeah, and here's how simple it is. Drinking warm water will wash the virus down your throat to be killed in the stomach acids. Don't be drinking cold beverages like cold beers and soda pops now. Tea all day. Warm. Yeah, warm tea. Warm, warm tea. tea all day. Yeah, I, I personally don't like warm beverages, but I'm going out of my way to drink warm. No, it makes sense. But more importantly, I put my, uh, my vase water down in my infrared spa uh, where the foot bath is cooking. We're getting a little bougie now, Nick. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh, they don't know what infrared spa is. <laughs> no, I'm mean, joking. No, 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 the Jing Orb, yeah. But long story short, then I pull that water up. Oh, which so you, is, structure, you structure the water that you're drinking with the Jing Orb as well. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then I'm drinking that, and it's structured water, and it's warm water, and I'm in a spa. Instead of the spa, usually I could only tolerate 20 minutes in the spa before, before I broke a sweat. I, I This is too hot. I got to get out. Because I used to put my feet up on the, the the little foot pads where the heat's coming out. And I realized it was my feet that couldn't bear it. It wasn't my body because here's what happened. When I put the Jing Orb in with the, the water tub and stuck my – have you ever seen me do it? Mm-hmm. And I stick my feet in. I, I could do two 35-minute se- sessions, 70 minutes while I'm doing broadcast, reading, doing my computer – I should cut away to, you want to see what it looks like? Sure. Okay. But but just to finish this last thing, because I'm going all over the place. Sorry, folks. That's how my, my mind thinks sometimes. There's a quiz you can take, docnutrients.com forward slash immune quiz. And I want you to ask about the antibody test. We're hoping the kits are going to arrive soon and we can start testing people because the PCR test is it's inaccurate. I mean, it's a test that you have to do five times in a row, it's 80% false positive, even by the admission of the Nobel Prize winner who created the test. And he didn't create it to detect viruses. He, did, he created it for other reasons. As he pointed out, there are ways to take um, delivery viruses and attack deadly bacteria like pneumonia and anthrax. And he discovered a way to 100% success rate, at least with animals, and we're seeing a similar probability in humans. Hmm. The guy's a flat-out genius. Um, too bad he's no longer with us, but, but uh, you know, he, he, he's uh, quite, quite the guy. So here, let, let, let me find this, this slide here because I think this is a legitimate, uh, a, a legitimate therapy. Oh, before I get to that, Check out um, hyperbaric oxygen. I think hyperbaric oxygen is far better than ventilators. And I'm not giving medical advice, but if I got a serious coronavirus, I'd be in that hyperbaric with pumped IV going, uh, vitamin C and so forth. Well, what are they saying? I mean, they're saying that it's not uh, it's not a viral pneumonia like they thought it was, right? That it's a, it's a virus that affects the hemoglobin and makes so hemoglobin no longer carries oxygen. And if that's the case, I mean, the only other way, if you don't have hemoglobin to carry your oxygen, the only other way is to you know, create enough pressure to dissolve it directly into the blood itself, right? Or into the plasma itself, which is what hyperbaric oxygen does. Right. But, but here's what I'm doing. This is really cool. I'm not using hyperbaric oxygen now. I'm using the CVAC high altitude conditioner because I'm building up my hemoglobin and my red blood cell count. So if I get hit with it, I'm already producing 20, 30% more hemoglobin and red blood cells. It's um, It's an extra buffer almost, right? An extra shield, so to speak. Well, yeah, but see at high altitude, but you don't just sit there. You go up and down, up and down. It simulates. I've been in a few times. Yeah, you go from like clouds inside the chamber to feeling like you're in a swamp and then back up again, right? Well, you You go go 
twenty thousand feet up and you drop at a thousand feet per second. So you literally you got to catch your breath at the top, even though you're sitting in the simulator, mm-hmm. and and it gets cold in the tank, and then it gets hot. You know, it actually down. forms clouds in it. Yeah, it actually forms clouds inside. <laughs> That's the craziest thing. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. But here's what happens: EPO erythropoietin. Your body produces erythropoietin, and 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 that erythropoietin is how shall I say? Um, it's a hormone that increases the production of your red blood cells to transport more oxygen. So we usually use it for altitude conditioning before guys are going to climb Mount Everest or Mount McKinley, uh, or, or you're in sports and you want to recover and you want to get used to delivering a lot of oxygen. Since I'm on an oil-free plant-based diet, my red blood cells transmit and carry tremendous amounts, 30% more oxygen than any other athlete. I'm smart. They, they don't get a clue they don't understand you put oil on your skin you don't consume it because mm. oil clumps the blood cells together it it thickens them together so when you when you see these these little uh, particles in the background those are just simply little f- food particles because i do my test in the middle of the day after eating but i can show you a snowstorm of uh, when I, if i consume like an indian restaurant and eat ghee or oil in, in the vegetables all that oil just pours my blood i'm ti- tired for the whole rest of the day because there's no oxygen coming in my brain oh yeah that, it, most people don't realize because they're so coated with oil on a regular basis, they're just always tired. They're but, clueless. Yeah, clueless. But when, like, f- same same as you, when I'm on that whole food, plant based, clean eating, your energy level reaches le- reaches a place where you know you cherish it, right? And then you eat that oil me- that oil filled meal, and you go, "What did I just? I just lost. I just lost that that ess- that whatever that was. It's gone. <laughs> it's like it's almost a immediate. Unique, it's hard to describe to people yeah. until they experience it. But it's a feeling of pure. Like going to Mount Everest and this like this fresh air into your Cleanness, lungs, into your body. Yeah, you just feel to... this light, clean energy. I never have to drink coffee. You know that I, about I, me. I haven't drank coffee in five or six weeks at least since I've been really dialing this in. So, yeah, I'm right there with right, you. Right, right, right. So the point is when you get to that place of this pure, pristine, I'll call it pristine. Your blood gets so pristine, it's transporting tons of oxygen, which is – your best defense against the COVID nineteen. Then let's say let's say I get hit with it, right? I'm not going to do be altitude conditioning. I don't want to deprive my body mm-hmm. temporarily of oxygen and force my body to produce more EPO and more red cells and more hemoglobin. Now I would jump in the HBOT under the emergency situation and pump tons more oxygen. I got all the red blood cells to transport it. Now my hemoglobin smile and saying, "I don't need you, virus. You, you're you're let you're shit out. Excuse me. You're out of luck, <laughs> and uh, and you're transporting oxygen to the max just through your plasma itself. Yeah. Yeah, and you're going to cut through it like like nothing. Like you was it a symptom? Did I have have COVID nineteen? Now, it's 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 un, it's unfortunate though. You know, we've our medical systems neglected therapies like that for so long that you know they've got they've got hundreds of ventilators, but they have one hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Oh, and it's usually in the burn uh, section yeah, of the hospital. Yeah, not even used for that purpose. They don't even use it for this purpose. We could be saving tons of lives here. Check this out. This is what I do every day. This isn't me, but I, I get I usually have my laptop in a book and I get in the far infrared spa and I bake. I mean I just perspire, but it's a nice it's, you know sauna, wet saunas are kinda you, you know, you're you're breathing it in. Those are cool. I mean, those are good for this situation, but that far infrared spa uh, sauna just builds up this core temperature like nothing else. Now now think about why do you want to build up core temperature? What do you think your body does when you have a flu or a COVID-19 virus? Your body, every, everyone, I showed you the symptom, fever. Mm-hmm. Your body's kicking up your body temperature to mobilize the antibodies, the white blood cells, the whole army to go kick ass. Meanwhile, I'm artificially creating uh, a fever in my body every time I jump in, in the tank, but I don't run the risk of dehydration. I'm drinking down all that um, clustered, um, energy-rich water, and it's warm water, and I'm drinking uh, I'm drinking 64 ounces of cold-pressed juice with greens and beets, and beets and nitric oxide. I'm using the grow muscle burn fat. I'm, I'm releasing nitric oxide for my white cells to kick ass. I've got 35 steps that the medical profession would like, what? It'd be like a pitcher having two pitches, right? He's got a curveball and a fastball. I've got 35 different combinations. Can you imagine? I've got 35 different combinations. And now, now batter, which one will I, I'm going to use? My catcher's got, he, he doesn't even have enough fingers to signal. If people follow sports, right? He's going, yeah. whoo, whoo, 
Why, why is he doing? That's number 20. <laughs> you're going to hit it with number 20. Or you're going to hit it with number 25. And I'm going, got it, got it, right, right. And I'm coming with this. I used to be a fastball pitcher, by the way. Nice. But Good it was there. freaky because I'm left-handed and I couldn't control it. I was like Sandy Koufax. I would rear down and throw that ball, and and I just watch the ball going shh like that. And I'm I, I had uh, I had a no hitter, which is I think in baseball that's, that's a big, big deal. deal. That's, that's rare, deal. you know. Mm -hmm. But then I, I I I wanted to play football the next season, and I retched my back, and I went back to play baseball, and out of nowhere I lost my fastball. Something mm -hmm. happened to my back that I couldn't. I didn't know. I felt I was throwing the same pitch, but I, I'd lost it completely. Hmm. There went my baseball career. So then I thought, well, I can hit I can hit the ball, and I could, and I started hitting home runs, and I made the, the all-stars, but I couldn't catch the ball. Here's what happened. I was in the outfield, and I had poor eyesight, and I didn't know it. I needed glasses. I didn't know it. No one tested me, and the ball would be coming, and I'd be like, whoop. And it drop, and I'd miss it. I was it was it was so embarrassing. The coach benched me, even though I was a good hitter. He'd pull me out. Uh, what do they call it when you're a, ben a pinch hitter? Yeah, like a, designated, could, a designated hitter. Yeah, I I'd, I'd okay. blast the ball, but pff, I was a lousy uh, fielder. Hey, we all have our strengths, right? Yeah. Forget baseball. <laughs> Forget football. I'm over. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Played it for years. And I, I'm it. teaching them 35 steps. So sorry about the diversion, but I'm teaching them 35 steps. Like the greatest pitcher who ever existed. I'm giving them every every tip to, to, to step into the game, the game of life, and learn how to how to win. Win this battle. Isn't that what it's about, guys? I'm gonna uh, April twenty second, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the, the thirty five steps. Oh, by the way, do you think they wanna see the Jing Orb? Check this puppy out. That's the Jing Orb. Even David Wolf, if those people who follow David Wolf believes in this thing. Um, uh, in a nutshell, I'll just mention that the heart has the most bioelectric energy. We are body electric. And the heart hardly ever gets cancer. It's like there's been one or two cases in all of medical literature. But organs like the liver, the spleen, the intestines, the breast, the prostate are very at risk. So what this Gene Orb does is I drop that, that orb. I'm trying to point to it. I drop that orb into the tub of water and... I, I let it run for 35 minutes, and my whole body energy rises to mm. the level of my heart energy. Is it perceivable? Like, is it something you, you can notice in one, one session? I, I didn't notice the first session. They, people go to conventions and test it, and they think it's detox and this chemical. It has nothing to do with it's chemicals a big old coming sales out of your pitch, feet. Right? Yeah, that's totally wrong. It's about energy. By the third session, though, if I go three sessions... I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like three, three in one day, or no, 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 okay. three, three during the course. Okay, I could ideally you do one, you you miss a day, doesn't matter. You do one, you miss a day. You don't have to skip a day, but at least three to four sessions a week, and and your body's like humming. I, you know when I know it, those people with chronic fatigue and and just their bodies just struggling, they can't figure out what the heck's going on. <sighs> Use that Jing Orb, and all of a sudden your body energy goes up like this. And it's like like if you were to do one of those um, auras, if you believe in that stuff, we go to a lot of... Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Your, yeah, your, yeah. your aura is like this this massive like thing. It's like it's, it's, it's like really cool. So are you, are you down for hanging out at my place and doing three Jing Orb I'm, sessions? I was, I'm, I'm glad you said it. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to impose, but yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I just... Uh, and, and you know, another thing I have at my house is the Everest. It's like air fresh Everest. I have one upstairs and one downstairs. In fact, it's right there. It's uh, Do I have a camera angle to show that? I probably don't. Uh, now you can't see it. But it, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can see it. See, it's down here with that little light. That That is the Everest. That puppy goes wherever I'm, I'm hanging out for more than an hour. Because I'm dropping uh, harmful pollutant chemicals that we're all exposed to it's, it's through ionic ionic yeah waves right that's how it does it or through yeah. ionic energy yeah it's not a hepa filter it literally if you walked into a smoky room the smoke would disappear it would be like it'd be gone it would be like where did the smoke go and you, it just drops them do you know where that technology appears in nature i was kind of surprised it only, along the ocean right yeah it's um fl flowing water yeah so rain ocean rivers they, that's why you always feel calm and like like you're in like a pure environment around in those places because all the ionic so energy. so where's my favorite place to work out in the whole world the beach. is it a gym <laughs> no the beach and the sunshine right yeah and, and i walk out at the ocean stick my feet in the ocean i ground my feet into the water which is 
number 34 of my 35 steps. Nice. And I'm grounding, I'm breathing in this incredible ionic air, and I'm lifting, going full out. You know when I'm lifting, mm-hmm. I'm going full out, and I'm watching pretty girls go by to increase my testosterone level. That's and my, to do And it. helping my adrenals with the sun. Yeah. So there's, okay. I'm, I'm, when I go work out, I'm ha- handling five of my 35 steps just right there. Nice. Check yeah. off. Did that one. Good to go, right? Yep, 15 to 30 minutes of sun. Yeah, exercise. Yeah. Exercise. Yeah, social interaction, all of it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta like, uh, because I'm single, I gotta like throw a, a starfish in the water near near the girl and trying to get her attention. You know what I mean? Starfish fly pretty far. You know what I mean? There you go. <laughs> I just work on your, you know, just it's like uh, it's like Thomas Edison, right? You just found you find a thousand and one ways not to make a light bulb, right? <laughs> You mean that's not a good pickup no, no, line? No, I'm, Throwing no. a starfish no, I'm not at a saying girl? that at all. No, I'm saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> all right, all right. That's funny. All right, so so let's get back to 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 um, uh, one of the next steps here. Um, I, I'm not going to – I could summarize the five steps, but it's coming up uh, in this big event, um, Wednesday, uh, April 22nd, and – it's a combination of five things you do and the five essential interventions. So just don't forget sleep, hormones, infection, immunity, nutrition, and, uh, and, and exercise, right? So with that, you get mostly all 35 steps is, is how it works, right? Take a look. Here's uh, my favorite guy right now, uh, Dr. Shiva. He wrote a letter to President Trump. And he's trying to get us all uh, back to work. And we want to build up the immune system in, in natural ways, not, not with synthetic toxins and chemicals. Uh, it's worth reading the letter that he wrote. And I'm going to reveal this in our show notes coming up for the webinar uh, April 22nd. So, and I have a letter going to Trump, too. I have one of his close advisors. So, uh, hey, yeah, I'm going to happen. Gi- I'm going to give him my 35 steps. And you know what? My 35 steps are less expensive than all the money they got pouring into these ventilators and antibiotics and vaccines. Far less expensive. In fact, 90% of them are just like natural part of of living if you knew how to identify them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that being said, and one of the cool things is if I had only one product to choose out of the 20 products that we have available to us for the doctors and and the public... You know what I would say, without hesitation, and this is probably your number one choice too, right? Take it every morning. Adrenal immune support. We have a special going on with six bottles. You're going to be amazed at the special that's coming up in uh, what? What is the twenty second? Depending on when they hear this, uh, you're going to be amazed when you hear this. That's we're talking six days from now. Maybe they'll hear it four days from now, unless they don't hear it live, and. Uh, you're going to get so much in, the, in, in that offer. We, we've never done. You know, and I feel like people need the help right now. I, I feel based on w- what we're going through as a culture, I feel it's our responsibility, you know what I mean, to, to do something about it. So what, why are we so excited about Adrenal DMG, Kyle? Dimethylglycine, the ultimate methyl donor. Cranberry, grapefruit, uh, which helps with the antioxidant properties. Garlic, uh, ashwagandha, the use of the echinacea. This is like some of the best herbs proven over thousands of, 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 of years, generations, that this builds up the immune system. Tea tree oil, wow. I mean, that just knocks out stuff like you can't imagine. Caprylic acid, all in one product. Wild cherry bark, which targets RNA, DNA viruses. We've got lodium. We've got, um, of course, the uh, patented Sensorol, which is where we can tell you that there's been clinical studies on the type of ashwagandha that we're using. These are all pure... Uh, uh, GMP, good Pharma- manufacturing practices. Great as well, right? Yeah. It, it's, it, it, you can't do any better. And I'm not going to get into a whole thing with the supplements right now. I, I'm going to get back to our, our discussion because I, I think that this time in the world, we need to hear what has to happen in order for us to change the outcome of the planet. So let's... Uh, Let's cut away here back to, <laughs> yes, here we go. We're going to go right back to escape. I think, I hope escape thing, yep, it worked. 
Uh, there was one more I wanted to show. Get rid of that. Here's what, uh, is this Gupta? Okay, here we go. Let's, let's jump to the this. The trade-offs that need to happen uh, in order for the U.S. to try to go back to some semblance of normalcy. Um, uh, take a listen mm -hmm. to, to this little clip, and we'll talk about it on the other side. Okay. Let's start with things that are really critical to the nation where we think we might be able to open without getting into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I tell you, schools are a very appetizing opportunity. Uh, I just saw a nice piece in the Lancet arguing that the opening of schools may only cost us 2 to 3 percent in terms of total mortality. And, you know, that's any life is a life lost. But to get every child back into a school where they're safely being educated, being fed uh, and making the most out of their lives with a theoretical risk on the backside, uh, it might be a trade off some folks would consider. All right, so Dr. Oz is basically saying there, I don't think he was referring to, because I looked at the land said, and I, I don't think he's saying, talking about uh, 2 to 3% mortality uh, for the entire country, which would, of course, be millions and millions of people. I think he's talking about this one land set study that talked about how the that, that, uh, closing schools only reduced deaths 2 to 4%. But that's still, that's theoretically, right. thousands of lives. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a trade-off that, that, that he's describing. It's a tough trade-off. I think a lot of people first heard that and probably interpreted him as thinking 2 to 3% of either the country or even children's lives, you know, 56 million people, uh, kids rather, are in schools. I think that, you know, the better way to sort of, I think this is what he meant. I haven't talked to him, but, you know, the model suggests that maybe some 60,000 people will lose their lives, sadly, to this uh, disease. Uh, how much are we gaining by the various measures that we're putting in place? Uh, the closing of schools, they say, may be contributing only to 2 to 3 percent of that. So that, as you point out, Jake, would be about um, 1,200 to 1,800 people, potentially. Again, not children, but people within the country. Every life is, is a life, you know, and, and, you know, what is the trade-off in terms of starting to reopen things? I, it's, it, that's a big one. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, that was the data that came out of Lancet. I'm sure Dr. Oz thought about that before he said that, but that is obviously a big one. But these are the questions that are going to have to be decided. If when we reopen, Jake, I don't think we're ever going to get to the point where we say, OK, we are absolutely free and clear. We can guarantee that no one will get infected, no one will get sick, and no one might sadly die from this after we reopen. The virus is still out there. It's still circulating. Until we have a vaccine, I think you know, that's, that's going to be the, the, these constant trade-offs that we're making. Okay, guys, you heard it. Until we, quote, have a vaccine, <clears throat> that's what we're waiting for. I mean, that's... As a freshman, they kind of for tell me, you, like, oh, it's, you it's, know, everything's going to build up to senior year. It, it's not good enough, okay? We already have 35 steps. Dr. Siva has his uh, uh, what's called personalized medicine intervention. We know what we need to do. Uh, I'm telling you right now, having studied the immune system and the circula circulation... For 43 years, I think along with Dr. Shiva, maybe Dr. Anil uh, Batchnath, who will be on, a guest on our show coming up on Wednesday, April 22nd, the 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. East Coast Standard Time. You need to hear exactly what we are going to lay out. And I gave you some hints about what what has to happen in order to beat this, this COVID virus. And we are convinced that we can beat it based on all the evidence and the science. And I, I, I again, I, I don't want to have people feel that we're misleading them in any way, but the COVID virus is gro a test, I'm going to summarize, is grossly inaccurate. That's right. The one study that was done showed it 80% false positive. Then they kind of revised it, but Kerry Mullis himself stated uncategorically the COVID-19 PCR polymerase chain reaction test will not serve the nation or the world in detecting this virus. Now, Michigan right now is uh, rolling out an antibody test. They got a hold of kits. I've got kits coming into town. And so we're going to be distributing these kits to people as soon as we get them in. I have people already pre-ordering, I don't know how many kits. Uh, so we're hoping to get a big shipment and it looks like we're going to be able to pull it off. But for me, 
the antibody test is valuable because you're you're really looking at how shall I say a situation where if you had the illness and you recovered it shows you had the illness if it shows that you basically are susceptible that's important but you know what the best test of all is a simple immune quiz test which basically I'm going to just cut away to it so so people I think do I have to put it in the highlight bar here so yeah i think i can just cut away to it here we go let's see so this quiz if you go right now to docnutrients.com and again i've got to give you a little disclaimer you know we're not we're, we're quote not giving you med- medical advice and so forth but just to give you an idea let's let's go through it together what do you think why not okay uh <laughs> we'll do you me? Yeah. Instead of you? Yeah. Okay, you ask the question and I'll answer it. Are you in a high demand or stressful work position? <laughs> uh, yeah. First, I agree to the disclaimer. Here, here, here we go. Oh, I'm in the wrong screen. Okay, I agree to the disclaimer. And yes, I'm in a very stressful situation all the time. Do you have trouble dealing with stress or dis- difficult situations? Uh, I have a three-second rule and I use NLP and timeline therapy and if all else fails, I resort to adrenal cortisol support. So the answer is no. I, I handle it well. The answer to the next question, I've never personally seen you ill for even a moment. So you can go ahead and say, no, you're not pr- prone to colds and flus. Correct. And if I did get a symptom, I used my 35 steps. If somehow I fell off the wagon and I'm only using, say, 30 of my 35 steps, I pull in those last five steps. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of you. If I've even see, heard you with a sniffly nose, and I think it's only been when you've like taken a moray or something. I don't think I've ever. True. Yeah, true. I don't think I've ever seen you with a, sn- a stuffy nose for any reason other than okay, that. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, do you have trouble getting up in the morning? No, you're. No, I maniac. wake up like a spring yeah. chicken. I mean, At it's like crazy. Five something, answering emails and all. Oh that. Yeah. yeah, and so. unfortunately, I'm waking everyone else up. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have chronic pain or difficulty recovering from injury? Uh, no, you do not. If I have a problem, I resort you, to the stem cell enhance, and I go right to stem cells. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you, pulled, you my pulled that hamstring a couple, you know, a couple weeks gonna ago, but it me. took like two days. Yeah, like, yeah. It's yeah, you know that. You're observant. Yeah, <laughs> okay, here we nothing. go. Do you have family history of hypertension, heart attacks, or strokes? Absolutely. My father had a stroke. I had high blood pressure. Your, your brother, I had a TIA. Ignoring, my brother. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have any family history of melanoma or of melanoma cancers? I think I had one family member that had something removed. I, I'm going to say no at this moment, but that could be iffy. Do you have trouble losing body fat? In the past, I did. So now, no. Do you have difficulty getting restful sleep? No, I sleep like a... You, a bear? A, a, yeah, a bear that talks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. You've been at conventions, uh, so, you yeah, know. You have full conversations where it's like, wow, who is he talking to? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's funny. All right, so type in. Here we go. Let, let's see what happens with the quiz. Mm-hmm. Oh, it makes it real small, huh? Oops, did I misspell my own name? Yeah, sorry, I'm typing sideways i'm struggling a little bit i should probably should not show this but here we go because i got a weird phone call today that you know about that freaked me uh, out to no end dude you know what i mean yeah the, the, the stress hormones were high today yeah did i handle it did i give up did i just fade away under well, the most look at what we're doing now i'd say that's a dude i, I called the fbi i did that that's not something you say every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's not someone you. Hey, dude, I, I need your advice. Okay, so how do I move this? Give me. How come I can't get that little picture out? Of I way? think you have to go. Bang. Oh, do I have to just in? Do what? It was just a different a different screen. Okay. All right. So here's my results, guys. Uh, over there. What am I supposed to do? Oh, scroll it. I'm on the yeah. wrong screen. <laughs> All right. Sorry. DNA stability. White blood cell efficiency. So red means I need focus. Okay. So my DNA instability estimate, 66%. Cardiac vulnerable estimation, cardio, 100%. White blood cell inefficiency estimation, 100%. So it's recommending for me DNA protector, insulin heart stability, stay young, chewable. Thank goodness I take all of those right now. Me too, yeah. Yeah. And then it's saying take the... 
get complete support, go ahead with the six bottles, including DNA Protector, which has it all. I mean, that even has adrenal immune support. And then there's Dr. Uh, Kathleen Geringer, who will be our guest uh, on the on Wednesday, Wednesday, April 22nd, uh, 7 p.m. East Coast Standard Time. There's a whole video that explains how the immune support works. I highly recommend you check these things out, guys. I mean, this we put a lot of effort for this COVID uh, situation, and uh, it, it, it really... <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Hold on, let me cut away from that screen. <laughs> guys, we love you. We're telling you right now that you have a chance to build up your immune system right now beyond your wildest dreams. You have a, a way to protect your body. You have a way to learn how the B cells work. You have a, learn, a way to build up your entire immune system, something that Dr. She, Siva and I are amongst, I would put about the top 1% of knowing how to build up an immune system properly. It seems like a lot of people know s single aspects of it very well, but as far as having the whole tool chest, I mean. I've been mentioning Dr. Shiva. Let, let's cut away to him for a few minutes because yeah. I, I didn't really show him. So, so let's do that. You. Do you know of someone, one of your friends, whose uh, husband is beating them? make sure they're taking Prozac. So they create a narrative of we're trying to help the distress and we are the drug company. We want to help all these darkies in Africa and India, etc. You know, we need GMOs. Gates is a savior. These guys are very clever at creating, spending millions of dollars to create the narratives of helping the quote unquote the oppressed and then they will inject them with their pharmaceutical drugs. These indigenous people actually knew how to take care of their health. But they don't want us to believe in our grandmothers. They want to believe in this idiot. Okay, Bill Gates. Who? Whoa. Jeez. Whoa. <laughs> is he mincing his words? No, not at all. He is right in their face. Whew. Honestly, although he's outspoken, he speaks with passion. Uh, MIT uh, graduate. He's one of the few. It's very difficult to get a PhD from MIT. I, I have a PhD, but not from MIT. The point is, I think they turned down uh, like more than 50% of the applicants when, when they've submitted their whole paper. I did it. You know, you're supposed to submit a paper. Mm -hmm. I submitted a study on 693 people that I followed for three years and you uh, for, for a year, that is. And usually a paper is, if you got a study on five people or 25 people, it's a good study. I did 693. Am I overachiever? A little bit, right? And and to this day, that study, I learned more about the outcome of reducing lipids, cardiovascular disease in 10 days. I published it with Tony Robbins as my uh, test group because he let me use uh, his entire audience to put them on my nutritional plan. And he was using his exercise that I fully endorse and his power of the mind, which I fully endorse. And so... That being said, you know, I, I think there's a time and a place that we have to pull together as a nation. And that script, if you will, and I'm just going back to this incredible offer that, that you really need to tune in. Uh, okay, I'm doing the same thing. How did you move that? What'd you do? <laughs> you can tell why I'm not the tech around here. All right, guys, check it out. The show notes have it really really register for nickdelgado.com i think i have that on the screen here hold on let me pull it up nick delgado there we go uh as of this day we're five days 18 hours 46 minutes counting down to five ways to strengthen the immune system and how do you move that again what are you touching show me monitor only boom oh Okay, so the five proven ways to strengthen the immune system. If you go to nickdelgado.com and you register here, all you got to do is click there and put your name and your, um, I think your uh, email. You can see uh, we have personal coaching, digital courses, the hormone quiz. We have recent videos from world experts, over a thousand videos that I know you've gone through at least 95% of them, would you say? Still working on some now, but yeah. <laughs> and we have the podcast link. Incredible. Please go to, you can see it at the top here, I think. Am I going to scroll up? How do I get that? 
How do I get that here? Okay, there we go. Go to nickdelgado.com. That's nickdelgado.com. And you will be able to register for this free event. It's going to be a, a, a life changer. And if we get President Trump to get this information, I guarantee you we'll all be back to work far faster with a strong immune system, with no fear of the next boogeyman virus coming through. Not that I'm belittling it. I'm doing my social isolation. I'm doing what the public is told to do, but I'm going beyond that. And you need to go beyond that instead of really hiding behind a false premise that some drug is going to come available someday. Don't wait for that. Get started now. Dr. Nick Delgado, be strong, be well. See you guys. You got it. Okay, guys, we love you.